The train headed for Sunset City will be departing soon. Welcome everyone to Sunset City, a Sonic podcast for the modern and classic age. With me today, I have the crisp autumn evening of a man known as Cirrus. Hello, how are you? And an actual dog, Channel Pup. Woof. And today we are going to be talking about a couple of things that have been going on in the Sonic world this past week. Not a great deal. We're going to spend more time with Q&A because uh, we got a lot of them. And thank you for your support. Speaking of... Um, if you do like what you we do here, please be sure you are rating us on your podcast service of choice. And I apologize we're not on Apple yet. We are getting there. It's going to take a little time. They are being a bit of brats. Um, and of course, the YouTube channel. We do appreciate the comments and the shares and all that fun stuff. And of course, we have all of our own projects on YouTube as well. And we'll get more into that at the end of the show. But for now, let's kick things off with the big hullabaloo about Sega NFTs. And we're going to leave that entirely on Cirrus because Pup and I don't know what the hell those are. So Cirrus, yeah, if you want to Yeah, everybody, buckle in. Us. It's going to be a <laughs> okay. Cirrus episode. Uh, leave, it to the, leave it to the socialists to scream about this. Okay, fair enough. So NFTs, if anybody is familiar with cryptocurrency... There's this thing called blockchaining, where you have your computer doing a certain amount of algorithms, basically, and it's what gives cryptocurrency its value. Well, NFTs take that exact same logic, where you're using a bunch of computers to do a bunch of calculations, but instead you're creating a unique domain name, and the NFT basically exists as a piece of data that is hosted on that domain that is a unique domain. So what is Sega doing? They're basically going to be distributing an NFT or an amount of NFTs uh, for people to have. It's basically like having your marriage between a physical item that you own in that it's scarce, but having a digital item in that it's, well, digital. It's an item that has no real value, but people think it does. And it's kind of a a huge slap in the face as far as like, Sonic as a brand is concerned. So Sega of America, just a week before this, did a, a thing for Earth Day involving Sonic, and then Sega of Japan goes and does this NFT thing. Now, why is this a problem? So no, remember when I said that you create a unique domain name that is, that is generated the same way that cryptocurrency is generated? So... To create an NFT domain, you need a bunch of computers doing calculations, and they essentially need to use up about as much power as it takes to power the city of Detroit for five minutes to create one of these domain names that is then used to, to host the data that this NFT, this, it could be an audio track, it could be a picture, anything that you can have as data can be hosted on, on an NFT domain, but because so much power is being used to uh, to actually create these domain names, these are awful on the environment. Like, you think printed money is awful on the environment. Imagine literally just a burning power for no reason to create it. That's what you're doing when you are creating an NFT. And again, remember, this is a piece of data, which ostensibly on the internet, when we put something on the internet, it's able to be copied. You can copy data that's on an NFT. Like, there's, if you are the one that owns it, you can make a copy of it, and you can distribute that a thousand ways, and it loses all of its value. So all of the, quote, value that was gained by creating an NFT that was unique as a domain name, it just, it goes into the aether. It disappears the minute somebody decides to be a good Samaritan with it. So it's useless to create. It's a stupid fad. It's incredibly horrible for the environment. It is awful for Sega as a company who has Sonic as a mascot, it is awful for them to use something like this because it goes completely against what that character cares about. Just, and again, this dials back to the, the wars between Sega of America and Sega of Japan back in Sonic 2 and CD. It's weird. Yeah, it's you clearly enjoying there. Kids? Enjoying <laughs> your lesson on NFTs? You came here for Sonic. Enjoy your <laughs> cryptocurrency <laughs> education. <laughs> 
It's great. Block <laughs> chaining bad. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, I guess a lot of people are still confused, and it's I get the confusion partially because I'm a bit of a slow learner, but the rest of it is because um oh there's a pizza clock with a ninja turtle on it. I'm definitely getting that. Um so <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. Like I, every time it's explained to me, if I had this explained to me no less than five times and my mind still can't wrap around the idea of not even just NFTs, but cryptocurrency in general. And the long and short of it, I get from all of this is just like, well, I guess just currency and everything is just fake and imaginary and we make up everything and nothing actually matters. And we're just destroying the environment for no fucking reason. But um, don't, of course, let that stop you from investing in Dogecoin. Um, I've got <laughs> Dogecoin. I want to see the value go up. So if anyone wants to do that, like, I can't guarantee it will go well for you, but like, you need to like, you know, please like, help help a brother out. Come on, stop. Are you, you scratch my back? I'll scratch yours. <laughs> Can I do it with a baseball anyway. bat at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so there, there, so, there's my diatribe on NFTs. Woo. Yeah, I am. I mean, I, I get the comparison with Sonic the Hedgehog. I kind of feel like a lot of Sonic fans are just pulling that out, like the environmental message. Like, yes, that was very obviously a hard point for Sonic very early on, especially in the American side of things. And I, I just kind of was like, well, when's the last time we talked about environmentalism? And I get it, you know, the the Twitter account made a thing. And I was like, after a while, I was just like, you know, Nick, I think you're missing the actual point here. Like, these things are bad. Let let fans be pissed about this because Sonic raised you better than this. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, we are pleased to announce the Sunset City NFT. No, <laughs> no. I swear, if you guys... City, um... And it's got a Sonic head on it. It's great. I will. Love it. I will three D print us a Sunset City logo to distribute to fans in a contest before we do any kind of NFT bullshit. I, All right, that's a promise. He's going to do it, guys. So <laughs> be so, sure to subscribe. Be sure to comment. And um, the way to enter. No, we're not doing to... giveaways, pup. Stop. So join. My patron. So, Cirrus, <laughs> explain explain to me, who doesn't understand simple second grade baby bullshit, how does uh, doing this complex algorithmic anything with no matter how many amounts of computers sucking up so much energy, how is that impacting the environment? So, when you so consider how much power your computer drains on its own. Now consider hundreds of computers doing this. This is what's called blockchaining, where you have multiple computers contributing to these algorithms. Now consider that instead of being used for anything, anything personal, you're not gaming, you're not doing anything, you are pushing your computer's limits as far as it can go to do complex math. And it's like, let's say you had 15 students in a room, and these students are all working on a math problem on a, a large chalkboard and they're all responsible for one part of the of the math problem that's essentially what each of the computers are doing here so when you're making an nft your computer is just sitting there idling but it's not just sitting there idle if that makes sense it's sitting there doing these calculations and heating up and getting incredibly strong in order to do all of this math, it's running math the same way that it's having to run math when it's generating something for your computer. Like if it's generating uh, like graphics for a video game, the same kind of polygons it's having to make, it's doing that, but generating a domain. Why is this using a lot of energy? Long and short, video cards suck up a lot of power. And the primary item that is doing all of the work is a video card. Now, to give an example of why this is an issue, not not just the environmental is issue, but also why this is a problem for people who are just PC users, like you, uh, like you and me have okay PCs, not the best things in the world, but if e either you or me wanted to upgrade our PCs, one of the things we'd have to get is a video card. How much does a video card normally cost? Well, the current video card that's used for a lot of uh, NFTs and really cryptocurrency in general, any kind of blockchaining is a NVIDIA 380. And a 380, when it came out, was about $400. It wasn't super expensive. 
But with the advent of NFTs and people trying to get their computers to be part of this blockchaining thing, now that exact video card that released last year is over is like what two thousand dollars now so oh, like God. yeah like so not only is this a problem in that you've got a bunch of computers just sucking up power not doing anything like they're not even again you're creating just a unique domain name that's entire value can be sucked away by just throwing this item on the internet afterwards like you're contributing to essentially nothing but this is also driving secondary things that are attached to this market Video cards is the biggest example, driving their prices way up. So if you are a content creator and you want to get into YouTube and you want to have a computer that can do editing and rendering really well, let's say that you're trying to use Blender, you need a good video card in order to render things out in Blender. You are effectively screwed right now. As long as this fad is, is doing its thing and every single time that blockchaining in some variety, whether it be cryptocurrency whether it be for NFTs, anytime blockchaining as a fad gets popular, video cards always spike in price in the secondary and even in the primary market, and it gets terrible. So, I mean, I've, I've got a laundry list of problems with this. It's bad for people who are consumers. It's bad for the environment because it's sucking up energy for no good reason. All the value can be taken away at an instant just by taking whatever data is on, is on that domain and throwing it elsewhere. It's just... It's, it's pointless. Fair enough. And again, the only thing that you gain from it, the only thing that you gain from the NFT is, is, is artificial scarcity. You've created scarcity in making a unique domain name, but instead you could have just hosted that on any website to be downloaded. Like, again, I guess if, if you wanted the benefits of a physical item without holding a physical item, that's really all it is. I think I hate this. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. It's it's just it's even worse than like trying to track down um a weird misprint on a, a video game or or like Samus with two arm cannons for that amiibo. It, or well, cause at least weird then you're, shit like that. Because yeah. at least then you're holding on to something physical, like something that's real. A domain name isn't real it in It just that feels same sense. imaginary. It feels imaginary. Yeah. And it, it kind of is. Cause yeah, like you said, the moment you uh you give that to somebody else it does it literally doesn't matter anymore so i i don't get it and that market is still growing so hopefully we'll see it die down but i uh i don't know i really don't have anything else i can really say on that i don't know if you guys have anything else the last thing the world re uh sorry let me try it again the, the last thing the world needs right now in the state that it's in is some new environment chomping uh, economy smashing new fad. Like, yeah. you don't need this. like, the world is at a precipice as far as the environment is concerned. I realize that people don't want me to jump up on some environmental soapbox in their Sonic podcast, but, like, it has to be said, we don't need this right now. Like, you know, the number one piece of advice I have for young people is hold off on having kids until you know what state the world's going to be in, because they're definitely going to die prematurely. So, so <laughs> as, as dark as that is, there actually is one last thing I want to say on this. There is a... I was serious. I don't know why you guys are laughing. <laughs> there is... Well, because it was... The, the delivery was actually funny, even though it's a serious topic. But Jeez. there is one thing that I will say to close off the NFT thing. When a when any country industrializes, it tends to leave a larger carbon footprint. However, the longer a country is industrialized, as it moves into different eras of technology, countries tend to leave a smaller footprint. The America's carbon footprint now is smaller than it was 20 years ago as technology gets more efficient. It seems really ass backwards to me to take all of that forward progress and lowering your carbon footprint, getting more efficient ways of generating power to then just crap it all away by having individuals do freaking blockchaining. Well, it's fake diet mentality, isn't it? It's like, oh... Yeah, I'm going to eat half a cake so I can have twice as much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I mean, I guess we, we had to get that serious stuff out of the way. Um, this is why everybody is as upset as they are about it. And I got to say, at least I am I'm proud of the Sonic community for 
for rising up in arms and saying this is a bad thing. And I'm hoping um, everyone takes a little more time to pay attention to the world around them because it is uh, going downhill hill real quick. And we keep getting warned about it and we keep doing nothing about it. So I never say this, yeah. but good going, gamers. Rise good up. Good going. Bottom text. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to less serious nonsense and then let's just get straight into questions. And then I'm sure we'll get into weird ass tangents as we tend to do. Uh, the only other bit of news we have, and I feel like I'm just like, <laughs> I, I listen to the Bumblecast every Monday when they drop it, and I don't really think about it. And then suddenly I will go on Twitter, and then all of Sonic Twitter is freaking out. Oh, we're talking very, about very the, occasionally the Chaos Emerald yes. thing. Yes. So Ian Flynn on his latest episode of the Bumblecast, um, which you should listen to if you're a fan of the comic book. Um, he just kind of nonchalantly dropped that he knows the uh, origins of the Chaos Emeralds because somebody asked him, like, well, do you think it could have come from this, this, or this? It was like, do you think, like, Chaos had anything to do with it? Because they do like to ask all these, uh, you know, hypothetical questions because they, they understand that he's a, you know, comic writer and they, they like the way he, he tells stories and they just love to hear how he would do a thing if he had the opportunity to do it. So they're asking, like, well, what do you think of, like, if Chaos had some some creation in it or Dark Gaia or Light Gaia or any of that? And he's like, oh, I, I can't speak too much on it because I, I know the origin. Um, but I can tell you it's none of them. So none of the great deities of the Sonic universe have anything to do with the creation of Chaos Emeralds. And that kind of... So... That kind of makes sense because I think in wasn't it in the first episode? It was either the first or second episode of this show where we were talking about how so many deities were linked to the Chaos Emeralds over time, and that kind of hinted that they couldn't have been the source for any of them. They just largely got power from them at one point or another over time, whether it be Chaos or Dark Gaia or any anything else that Eggman's tried to destroy the world with. Yeah. So basically, um. They belong to Julie Sue of the... <laughs> no! They are bringing Ken Penders back into right, and... Oh, God. Yeah, get ready. I kind of want to die a little bit now. I'm not even going to lie. Well, what do you guys think about this? Uh, I was... I, I didn't really think too much about it. Like, I gave it a listen to like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I didn't know we had any kind of origin at all. I thought they'd just say, whatever, they're just fucking there. What do you guys think about it? I think the idea that that it's even that, that there even has been considered right an origin of them that is somewhere that's just not been talked about in any of the games it now that we know it makes sense but at the same time that's kind of a big reveal like that's kind of a that's kind of a big thing cuz now you're like wait hold on we've had Sonic on as a mascot as a character for 30 years and yet this topic has never been touched before. Like, yeah. like, like Ian Flynn knowing it, I am, I am, I am neutral on Ian Flynn knowing because, because to me, having anybody responsible for Sonic stories, having a bit of insider information, that just makes sense. But yeah, past that, the fact that this has not been talked about, and none of the characters have even questioned it, actually, even in 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 any of the lore, from what I under, from what I can think of. For them, the Chaos no, Emeralds no, have always no. just been. I mean, Perhaps yeah, Archie, characters. obviously, but... Yeah. Perhaps the characters kind of just accepted it as a part of their world, and they're going to find out in some grand revelation soon. I don't know. But um, whatever it is, I hope they're not going to say, like, oh, it's attached to Sonic. They came about when Sonic came about, or something like that. That like, would be weird for the Chaos Emeralds to have come about 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Yeah, they feel like <laughs> an ancient thing. So maybe... Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I don't really read Sonic comics very much, so I don't yeah, know too yeah. much about that kind of expansive lore. So, like, I think was it not stated that they're like ancient or something? So I could rest assured that's probably not the case. But um, I think it makes sense for for me. It just makes sense for Chaos to some way be involved because his name is literally Chaos, and they're called Chaos Emeralds. I kind of like the idea that they're linked. But um, yeah, no, I've got not much to say about it. But um, I'm interested. I'm intrigued, um, and I think it's always good 
to get a bit of additional context in the Sonic universe. Like, I want to know, like, where the rings come from. I've got this headcanon that the rings are made of honey, and they're made by bumblebees <laughs> that basically use them to guide Sonic through his journey. So they're like... <laughs> Wayfinders. I don't think it's that lame. Wait, like, so, imagine... Char so Charmy B is Charmy actually the end all be all. Kind of... No, no, he's a different kind of bee. We're talking honeybees or, or bumblebees. They fly around in little loops and that creates the ring. Oh my God. And, and they make them as a means so that Sonic can find his way. I like that idea <laughs> and I think it's cute. I'm being I so polite, that. just being quiet while you're being so goddamn stupid. I just... <laughs> oh, okay. How okay. am I we, being <laughs> so So, everybody here has had to sit through 15 minutes of me going through an asinine diatribe about blockchains. Yeah, like you, we were I learning. Care. We learned <laughs> things. <laughs> Fucking bumblebees. God damn it. Um... Okay, so Nick hates bees. We've got a wasp advocate over here. Wasp Fucking advocate. Hell. Okay. <laughs> I don't think... Uh... Well, um, I'm wondering if this is just because Ian's writing the uh, the Sonic Encyclopedia that's going to be coming out this summer. Um, I wonder if it's actually going to be anything more than just a few lines saying like, hey, these are these mysterious things and well, they've just been about for, for a while and they're just naturally formed from chaos energy. Please. Da, 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 da. And he just can't say anything because he, he, you know, signed a, I almost said NFT. He almost signed an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> an NDA. Right, right. Like yeah. he signed, just signed an NDA saying, because, you know, Sega is just weird about shit. So maybe he's just not allowed to pass that information on as mundane as it probably will end up being, uh, just because it's going to be showing up in, in the encyclopedia. I'd like for it to be a story, but I would like for them to reveal it in like a storyline. Um, I mean, I think we all do. If it's but... an encyclopedia, it's whatever. But yeah, no, Ian Flynn, the bees. Just remember the bees, okay? Not, not the bees. Pop. I don't not need royalties. I just want to see my bees. Because it's <laughs> not as stupid as Nick says it is. He's an old man. He's stuck in his ways. He sees them as gold or something. So, like, I've, honey rings. Honey I've rings. always... Um, I mean, I've talked about... I've hinted at my ideas for goofy shit when it comes to that. Because that's part of the fun. I think Ian enjoys that, too, is very obviously a lot of these games weren't built with this deep lore in mind. So why so did you insult my bee rings? So when, <laughs> so when you you know you dig into this and you fall in love with this stuff and you and you want more for this world, especially thirty years on, it's fun to kind of just yeah make your head cannon or try and you know enrich in the world in some little ways. And in my head, um, you called it stupid. We we on we understand the rings. Or the way they are because Mario already had coins. That's why that exists but the way it, it does. But like contextual, like I swear to, I swear to God. <laughs> so with the rings, I think, I think so, Pup is just trying to get conflict. Yes. So with the rings, something I've always noticed about them, and we do have a little bit of, I don't know if it's even canon anymore with the chaotics, but we know the chaos rings for sure were formed because of the Master Emerald. Mm. Um, at the base of the Master Emerald, there's enough. Uh, energy from it that it crystallized into to a ring formation and after all these years sonic has so many different kind of rings but i always just assume like this is just a natural evolution of the world of sonic the hedgehog where it's full of chaotic energy and every now and then just because the universe is mad chaos every now and then it just forms together in this beautiful unison that makes sense and um with sonic it makes sense he's as quick as he is because the world that uh, he's around forces adaptation that's how evolution works the creatures in that world um have grown the way they have to navigate and survive in this world that's full of loop-de-loops and it makes sense that everything's built out of loops because rings are natural forms of energy so it's just rings 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 question all the way down how does in games where sonic doesn't even talk and nobody talks how does he know what direction to move in like we know because we're the player but like you got to think he's got a 3d space ahead of him how does he know where to go the rings guide the way but that's a very deliberate thing right oh no so oh. what if there oh. were bees that were trying to show him the <laughs> way it. through I'm making these honey rings <laughs> 
Oh my god. Pub. Pub. You could literally call I them will the honey ring. find yeah. you. I can, don't can, understand what is so heinous about this theory. Pup, can I please get your coordinates for not carpet bombing related reasons? Just... I do not understand the issue with this theory. Okay, so on I, I, I have a so Nick. Nick. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned you mentioned carry we're we're going to ignore the, the problems with with like the specifics of evolution carry for on. a second. Okay. Carry on. So I just thought of something very, very dark to piggyback off of your uh, character adaptation thing. So we know based off of E102 Gamma's story that the flicky bird whatever whatever animal is powering the robot, it doesn't die. It just it just sits there powering the robot in perpetuity, right? Mhm. Mm what if all of the what if all of the little animal buddies in Sonic their adaptation for survival is being more efficient batteries? Isn't yeah. that dark to think about? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, they they have to be there's got to be a reason uh, Robotnik keeps going back to them, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, doesn't he say so in um in Sonic Lost World? He says like bunnies to bad nicks. Bunnies yeah, bunnies to bad nicks instant army is his is his line in Lost World. Oh, okay. I thought he said something about them being a power source, but okay. No, okay. he just said, he just says the the only thing that he said is like the best power source has been like hyper go on energy and colors. But in Lost World, it's just him him talking to Zavok. Bunnies to Badniks, instant army. And then we get an expounding on that when he's talking to Starline in IDW when mm -hmm. he says that his his Badnik armies are limited by the speed at which he can produce these shells for the animals to go into. Which means there's there's always where, plenty like, of um, animals. He just needs shells. You ever wonder where Robotnik gets all like the money and resources for his invent? Like there has got to be a lot of metal there. That's got to he's got to be a wealthy guy. That is actually oh, a lot of fucking bees guiding away. <laughs> I was going to say that's actually explained in IDW too. There's a whole point where like Starline asks him, "How the hell do you do all of this?" He's like, "Well, I got robots that are built for fighting Sonic and I got robots that are built to build shit out of other shit." That's what they do. So I'm just saying by the way, a comment section below um comment below if you don't think my B idea is stupid. Also like, comment hashtag, if you do think the B idea is stupid. Hashtag I really like the B idea. Like we need a more streamlined hashtag, but like bees. So for the Chaos Emeralds, I am I'm kind of torn because I like the idea of them just being born out of chaos. Because something I've always liked about Sonic and um this is something I've always kind of compared with Chaos and um Sonic, is I always see two sides to what chaos can actually mean where it can be this violent wild crazy thing in the form of perfect chaos and i thought that was always kind of an oxymoron of a name that was kind of the like. point but i also feel that's the case if you look at sonic perfect chaos where you see it formed up and wild and you know potentially violent just right behind those eyes but still in complete control of himself and used as a force for good. And I always saw these creatures, maybe they aren't, you know, the source of the Chaos Emeralds, but they are conduits to Chaos Energy, and they, I don't know, like I talked about with the Super Emeralds before, where it's like everything in this world kind of works together once it's kind of synced up, and Sonic just happens to be one of those creatures that syncs up so perfectly that I I don't know. Like again, this is just the natural chaotic world that he lives in, and he just so happens to be the creature after all of this time that just clicks with this stuff better than anything else out there. So that, I, that's what I, I like am, about it. I am gonna say there's a bit of a poetic thing there. If if Sonic is like literally the embodiment of perfect chaos which would make per Chaos himself almost like a proto-Sonic. And then right after that, you have Shadow and Bio-Lizard, where Bio-Lizard is an artificial proto-Shadow. You basically just uncovered my why Super Sonic matters. That's... <laughs> the whole point. Did I... Did I, I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean uh, that, that poetically works out, though. I mean, Gerald literally mm -hmm. built an entire pseudo-Echidna shrine 
just to make all of that function. And instead of chaos, he came out with bio lizard. And I think that's kind of a perfect summation of the Sonic franchise as a whole. And again, once I release this video, none of this is going to matter because I'm talking about it now. Um, I'm not the first to say it, but there's nothing that some surmises the Sonic franchise better than the word chaos. And even when this wasn't intentional, as I don't think any of this chaotic stuff should be, you can line it all up and it all makes sense still. Like there's enough there and that's kind of beautiful. And that's kind of what I want the chaos emeralds to be. It's unintentional beauty. And I, I don't know. I think there's something beautiful, really cool about that. And I, I don't know if we'll get that. I'm kind of worried. Like after all these videos where I look way too deeply into like super forms and these magical, magical jewelry that it's just going to end up being. Yeah. You know, it just kind of showed up one day. And <laughs> I couldn't talk I'm, about it for legal reasons. It didn't actually matter. I'm I'm just going to say this right now, Nick. You know that, that thing you want me to print you, that mask? I'm going to send you a tinfoil hat with it. What the fuck are you Do guys what you talking want, about? man. That got a million ass <laughs> views from that hypersonic video. You should, I, I'm on to something. <laughs> I know. I know. I can't. Ah, jeez. There's a new definition for reading way too far into things and finding things that are not there. And the, it and works the, for me. It works, it works for you, but you made it up. Wait, That's about as headcanon as the ring That's theory. the point of drawing and writing and all this shit we have to, like those writers have to do for Sonic the Hedgehog. We're like, we take the source material but and we're going to make a better it, story out of it. <laughs> I bet That's no, Ian Flynn's done such a great job. Hey pup, I found upon this universe. Pup, I found the secret. This is what you do to pull your channel out of a slump. You just make up a bunch of shit about the amazing Spider-Man movies. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is an allegory for communism. And when you think about it, his red shirt Wait. and his yellow color scheme represents a lot here is there See, but you're going at it like i like i'm saying like any of this is intentional and the entire point of my i know i'm my just thesis... i'm messing with you i'm messing with you <laughs> don't worry about it i knew i'm just stopping you before you end up going like in communist poo <laughs> made <laughs> by bees wait who does poo. drink poo does eat honey and honey is made by bees <laughs> nick you're on to something Aren't I just? I told you I'm good at this. <laughs> okay, look, if you if you can shit on the bees, I can shit on your chaos allegory. It's loud. Uh, I think we should talk about... Just, oh, Nick. Well, I think we should talk about uh, Q&A. <laughs> I think that would be the thing that saves us from whatever the hell's about to happen. We were doing so good, guys. Like, we had, like, a nice, serious uh, <laughs> little TED Talk about how NFTs exist, why they exist, and why they're bad for the environment and great theories about Sonic the Hedgehog and fucking bees. And then, <laughs> oh, it's the bees. That's okay, guys. We're going to we're going to release a shirt that just has Channel Pup really happy and it's just going to say fucking bees. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, needs to happen. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Wait, wait. It needs to be. You guys know the, the aliens guy, right? From from History Channel. Yeah, <laughs> it needs to be it needs to be that, but pup, and it just says bees. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's move on to Q and A. So he's so tired. Nick is so tired. <sighs> okay, all right. He's almost up. Okay, yeah, we need to need to send pup to bed. Poor guy. Oh my god, it's so late over there. He's the one who wanted to talk um, about bees. This is his fault. <laughs> can you just leave the fucking bees alone all right let's just go on to the q a <laughs> you you brought a bee to a sonic fight so this, it's not charming okay so we've grabbed some uh we grabbed some of the questions and again i apologize if we haven't gotten to yours yet it's either redundant lost in the ether ether is or it ether Lost in the ether, or, or it's just a ether. shit question. We don't want to answer it. That's or we just haven't gotten to it yet, and we'll and we'll get to it in due time. Or it really um, is I, just again, a really crap question, and it's not worth answering. And you should be ashamed of yourself. So if <laughs> if you want to participate in this show and be part of the Q and A, again, we're still finding our legs, so we'll figure out how to set time aside here. But this is going to be the 
know, the rest of our show here. Um, but if you want to participate, um, you're more than welcome to leave comments in any of our discords. I don't know, Pup, yours is uh, Patreon exclusive, so I don't know if you have anything set aside. <laughs> I don't but I'm think sure... they even know that. I don't think my Discord even knows that this podcast exists. Fair enough. You've been doing a great uh, job. Cirrus has one, one set up. I have one set up. Um, you can email us at sunsetcitypc at gmail.com. Um, you can leave uh, your questions in the comments of the YouTube video if you'd like. We're going to do our best to track it all down. Uh, but for right now, I think a good majority of them have come from um, my Discord. And then we have a question from Cirrus's Discord to go over tonight, I believe. Yes. Okay, so um, let's just uh, kick things off. I've not read these ahead of time, so I'm curious to see what we get, and we'll just read them one at a time. Um, so we'll start with Latrune. I wonder if that's how you say it. It's Latrune. Latrune? That's the one from my Discord. Okay. All right, so Latrune asks, so uh, I'm kind of sort of curious on some lore bits and how it works and all that, but no idea where to even start. Only knowing Boom and the one where Robotnik won before the first episode and the heroes are a resistance group. Where's the fucking question? I guess, are these unconnected or there is sort of meta explanation or some sort of series continuity or how to call... Basically, he's asking if there's any continuity between all the different continuities. Am I getting that correctly? That's, that's, what, yeah, she's that's, that's what she's asking. Okay, Latrune? No. <laughs> that's why we're in the state we're in actually just, just no Latrun possibly when sonic prime hits netflix in 2022 i think you're, when it could you're giving potentially that... tie the sonic multiverse together i'm, I'm not even going to give I... it a potentially for years the 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 rule with sonic has been this there are different canons they are not canon to each other they might reference each other but functionally sonic in the the resistance series so sad am does not exist in Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom Sonic does not exist in the games outside of oh. Rise of Lyric. So now there's rules. Or you can just do what <laughs> Nick and Snurris do and just make your own canon reason as to why they're all connected. And then you can make a YouTube video about it and get more subscribers than me, you punk. So <laughs> there's, um, yeah, there's no connected canon. And to be honest with you, they still need to figure out the canon of the games themselves. That seems to be, yeah, true. I do get <laughs> fucking tired of people just saying like, well, uh, Sally or this or that doesn't matter. Cause it's not canon. I'm like, bitch, like <laughs> it's all your fiction. Doesn't Sally doesn't matter. Well, it's, <laughs> it's all fiction, but not only that, but like the source material cares way less than the satellite material in terms of a continuing cohesive story. So yeah, right about that. Yeah. It's whatever. There I'm I'm hope I'm with you, Pop. I really want Prime to bring it together. Even if uh classic and modern are two separate universes, I can live with that fine. I just I need them to explain it. That's all I want. I know it doesn't matter that much. Like it should just like make your game and have a good enough story to carry you through it if you're gonna bother with the story at all. Again, when you've been around for 30 years, put in the fucking effort and just duct tape this a little bit together. It's not that hard. You have time traveling, reality warping stones. Just make it happen. We do have another we, we do have another question. Uh, but the long and short of the answer for that one is none of these are tied together in any in any real way. Right. Though if you had if you needed a suggestion for where to start, just go read sonic idw volume one and just start there and just enjoy that canon because it's good if you enjoy more of that um go backwards into archie um we'll give you plenty of guides that's part of the reason why sonic speed reading exists we'll guide you through it we'll get you there it's convoluted but if you can get through some of the weirder stuff there's some really really cool stories worth worth uh, uh tracking down so the next question we've got is from Saturn fan, and it's what are some good Genesis, Saturn, or Dreamcast games that aren't exclusively Sonic related? I so this is going to come from a from an area of fanboyism from me, but the best version of Resident Evil Two, not counting remakes, exists on the Dreamcast and the Dreamcast alone, because the Dreamcast version of RE Two has special trackers for your characters on the VMU. And that's not that's a thing completely and wholly unique to the Dreamcast. 
a little old um, curiosity from my childhood that feels kind of like a fever dream today was on the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, there was a game series called James Pond. And if I remember right, that wasn't bad. Um, we had James Pond 2, and um, he was like this fish, and he could stretch and stuff. And I have no idea what correlation he has with James Bond or anything, but like he, he was a fish, and he stretched, and he was a secret agent. And yeah, so that was not a bad game. Um, also, Chakan, the Forever Man. Um, spookiest Sega logo you'll ever see. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm not... I've not played too much of that. I think that's on the uh, the Mega Drive and uh, Genesis Mini, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. I don't remember. I've only seen a little bit of that game. Um, I'm happy to to share with you if if you're just looking for suggestions as far as like what you should be playing on those three systems. Um, there is a good amount of stuff, and it's largely going to come down to what you are interested in. Um, Sega is largely focused when they were making machines, um, bringing. Um, the arcade experience home more than anything else. And you don't see that anywhere more than you do in the Dreamcast. Um, but just starting with like the Genesis, um, there are some essential stuff that you should absolutely play if you have that system. Um, I had Jurassic Park. I don't know if that's essential, but it was it was gorgeous for the time. It has the Aladdin? best version of Aladdin. I was about to say it has the best version of Aladdin. People will contend that one way or the other. Capcom made some killer Disney games, but just to see what they pulled off with that machine, you should definitely check out Aladdin because it was stunning for the day. They actually had animators from the movie help to make those sprites, and it's it's absolutely incredible. Outside of that, um, some other ones I can remember, and I will debate on some of the other ones that are like must plays for people. Like a lot of people like Altered Beast, but you could play literally so many different versions of that, and I don't think it's that good. I've never been able to get I, into Altered Beast. It's just an arcade game brought to it's it's a clunky game. Stuff you should play. Uh Streets of Rage 2, Gunstar Heroes, Shinobi. I like three a lot. Revenge of Shinobi is really good as well. Um, if you can track it down. Um, Rise Star for sure. If you're a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, you should definitely try out Rise Star. It doesn't have that same momentum. Again, you're not going to find that anywhere else, despite how many uh, posers there are out there. But Rise Star is made by Sonic Team. <sighs> <laughs> I just Comic Zone. Nick. <laughs> I'd say Comic Zone is definitely something worth checking out too. It was really unique for the time. It's it's hard as hell though. I've never beaten it. Um, I've heard Bloodlines is really good as well. I've uh, I wasn't a big Castlevania guy. Um, I've heard Fantasy Star that series is really good. I've not played through them, so I might be a liar. Uh, I'm gonna try to get through the rest as quick as I can because I'm sorry because I've I've grew up with all these systems. You, I was about to say you can uh, tell first, the, you can tell who the Sega baby was here. Yeah, um, Sega Saturn, Sega Saturn. Um, definitely try out Panzer Dragoon Knights. And not, yes, Knights for sure. If you can play the Saturn version of Christmas Nights, it has a unique Sonic demo. It's literally his first appear playable appearance in 3D is in this weird little demo disc, and it does not exist in any other version of Knights. It's on the Saturn version. Um, if you're going physical and then legally, um, it's cheaper to import it. It's the exact same version. Just get it for the Japanese version. Um... Die Hard Trilogy, both, again, fine for, for what they were. Daytona USA is just a weird, like, three-track racer everyone likes. Um, I haven't played Panzer Dragoon Saga. Nobody has because it's insanely expensive. Uh, what else did... I, I really liked what Sonic Team was doing back then, like, really busting out there. I mean, you definitely have to play Knights if you're a Sonic fan. And Burning Rangers was another Sonic Team joint. Definitely worth checking out. A lot of fighting games. Lots and lots of fighting games. If you're the, oh. in, into importing, do that for, for that system. Marvel vs. Capcom, Virtua Fighter 2, Darkstalkers, I guess. I don't know if there's like better versions of that compared to the PlayStation, and there's like better better ways to play it nowadays there's better ways to play dark stalkers no but it's not yeah it's not been largely improved unfortunately it's still 
it's still using like the old sprites and everything. It hasn't really been touched up that much. Yeah. Um, uh, Dreamcast, Soul Calibur um, One, and Dead or Alive Two. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, Soul Calibur was, if it wasn't Sonic Adventure, if you weren't buying it for Sonic Adventure, you were buying it for Soul Calibur. That's what got people really interested in that system because it was such an arcade perfect version of that game and that game was insanely pretty for the day um better ways to play code veronica but it was like one of the first times i was actually invested in a resident evil game i was just watching my my uncle play it but i was really impressed with it back then so if you're a resident evil fan that's a very interesting part of that series history it's a, it's a very black sheepy kind of game on the series now though it's like the Sonic CD of the Resident Evil series at this yeah. point. Um, Skies of Arcadia, you got more fighting games. Power Crazy. Stone, for sure. Crazy Power Taxi. Stone. Crazy Taxi, uh, Jet Set Radio, Jet Grind, depending on where you're at. House of the, the Dead 2. Though House of the Dead Shem 2, New. I'd say, probably plays a little better on the Wii now. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. I mean, there's other ways to play a lot of these games. Um, I'm just kind of giving you like the the greatest hits of them. Uh, I didn't really prepare for like the really unique, weird things that stood out to me as a kid. Uh, Toy Commander, I like that a lot. I don't know if it's really good or worth going back to. I like the Dreamcast version of Vigilante 8 Second Offense. Uh, Speed Devils, which is very boring, but I, I just like the environments there. And that's that's all I'm going to give you for right now. <laughs> that is, that is quite the list. list. I'm just... Uh... I'm just flabbergasted. I didn't know they made games for the Sega Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, pup. It is dude. it is Sega's best selling system, dude. It is I always thought it was system. just an ornament. <laughs> oh man! Well, pup, if you, you have, collect for the Saturn import, you have the best. Uh, you have the next question, pup. I do. So, dude, I'm just bodaciously blue. Asks. What makes franchises like Sonic so appealing to you? I guess my answer would be, I just want to fuck hedgehogs. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to have sex with Big the Cat. <laughs> He's just so fluffy. <laughs> he, his embrace, it's all-encompassing. No, he I... calls I, me Froggy <laughs> when he finishes. <laughs> <laughs> froggy, <laughs> let me get on your face! <laughs> Okay. Oh, froggy, I'm coming. Okay. I think I, I think my Hail answer to the king, baby. <laughs> oh god, that what... monetization request is not going to go through. Is it? <laughs> it no. was it was John St. John that did big. No. Did big. You're right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. So I I will say this: as far as the Sonic series is concerned, for me, it's that there is it rabbit holes. I think rabbit holes is it for me. There's always a tip of the iceberg with Sonic and, and series like it. Resi I'm the same way with Resident Evil for the exact same reason. You start enjoying the games, and then when you're done with that, you start looking at peripheral stuff. And the more it seems like the more you dig into the peripheral stuff, it 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 almost never ends. The amount of stuff you're able to find, whether it be little interesting tidbits about how certain things were made, like for Sega. You know, we're looking at the Sega of Japan and Sega of America divide during the, the Sonic CD and Sonic 2 era. Um, you're looking at the the comic books. You're looking at the TV shows. You're looking at the meta humor of the current era for Sonic and the where those references are coming from. And there's always more you can uncover. And I think that's the thing that largely makes it work for me is that it's not a series that you... It's a series that you can enjoy it just as much as you want. If you just want video games, you can do just that. If you want a massive amount of story and several novels worth of it, you can find that in here too. For the um, more genuine answer on my end, <laughs> um, Blue Hedgehog, go fast. Brr, <laughs> fun. <laughs> fun me. Rings. Please. <laughs> God damn uh nick save us, sally please. acorn sally acorn your sally final, acorn final was answer. the sally acorn was the thing that made your balls drop made me a man strong 90s woman <laughs> look at that haircut <sighs> boots for days you know what i mean is this is this just, <laughs> is this just gonna turn into a horny podcast and i thought i was the weird one <sighs> 
Anyway, no, I mean, it's I, I was actually genuinely thinking about this, like what got me into the series. And I, I mean, I think all of us did as like real youngins for most, the most part. Um, what attracted him to me was, I'd say, like most things I'm a fan of, it's more design before anything else like i really do love stories and all that stuff but when i collect stuff it's because it it looks cool to me even if it's not the greatest thing in the world like i have a bunch of green ranger stuff and i'm doing it because it's green and it meant a lot to me as a kid but i don't rewatch power rangers i i know most of that stuff but I, i'm not gonna pretend like it's that good with sonic though um i really like the designs and yeah, as Sir said, there's just a lot more to dig into. And even from day one, like it it provided a gameplay experience that really was not like anything else on the market. It really felt like games were moving forward, and not just because it was so pretty, but because it moves so fluidly. And and when you play a Sonic the Hedgehog game, especially in the 90s, especially the very first game. It's just it's just hard to go back to that static, safe platforming of like some Mega Man and Mario, which are great games, but it just didn't feel as fun to move anymore after Sonic. And it's it's hard to hop off that ride once you start it. It's like having fun walking around the theme park after you got off the ride. It's, it's like it's it's like yeah, it's like you never actually stop the ride. You just get on and you just keep going. Well, so yeah, that's maybe. what that's what got me into it. I think for for me, like I, I mentioned the whole lore stuff. I think it was just that me and my friends were able to have so many long conversations about it because, like, I had friends who had who owned the comics before I did, and mm -hmm. they were able to just like expound on the universe so much because for for us as kids, we thought it was all a connected universe. So we were trying to, like, conspir conspiracy theory way, connect the dots between, okay, so this is when Knuckles evolved from his green state into here, and that's when he was able to meet them on Angel Island, but it was a misunderstanding there in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and that's how we get here. That's that's the stuff we were doing as a kid, and it would, obviously none of it was canon to, its, to, to itself, but sure. it was still, it was a thing we were able to do that we, we weren't able to do Otherwise, like we played Mario and we enjoyed it, but the stuff that we had the most fun with was the stuff we were able to uh, to just enjoy over and above what we were given in the source material. It was that way for it was that way for Sonic. It was that way for Resident Evil. It was that way for Yu-Gi-Oh. Anything that had like peripheral Pokemon as well. Anything that had peripheral media that we were able to consume. That's the stuff that sucked us in most. Yeah, good answer. Uh, Pup, any more you want to add before we move on to the next question? Um, I like Sonic. Um, and yeah, there, <laughs> there we have it. Um, I, 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 I got nothing. Um, he, he wants, to, he wants ahead. to fuck bees. That's what it on is. On to the next. It's got nothing to do with the bees. Uh, let's just, uh, let's go on to the next question. So Fiery Litton asks, and I think this is to me specifically, how does it feel to collab with Channel Pup, Cirrus? And Wallace, all at the same time, of course. Well, Wayne is dead, so. Not <laughs> for you, okay? <laughs> Do you have rabies? He actually sounds like a dog about to sneeze. <laughs> Wallace, holy shit! <laughs> Wallace it must be bus. a British thing. I don't know why that's so funny. I just okay. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne, no, if you're okay, listening so to this, you're now you, Wallace um, the Tombstone. Do you um you have Wallace and Gromit over there in America? The little claymation. There's of course the bald we, we and do. The dog and they, of course they we love do. cheese. Um yeah, well cheese, I guess Cheese Gromit. I don't don't do that. But like um I did an American accent. Isn't that how it goes? Isn't that exactly how it goes? <laughs> Fuck off Nick. Um, Nick, I can Nick it. How does it feel to be stuck in here with us? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, sorry. Um, it's just fine. Wayne doesn't feel like a Wallace <laughs> to me, and that just makes it funny. Um, go on. I, I wonder if he like, like, legitimately was. I wonder because like it's so far removed from Wayne, I can't tell if it's intentional <laughs> or not, and it's funnier if it's not. <laughs> oh no! Uh, 
Jesus. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute my mic. I'm gonna let you answer. Um, All right. I mean, genuinely, like, I mean, yes, like, despite me and Pup yelling at each other over superhero movies or trying to keep these knuckleheads on course when it comes to topics, I look forward to this show more than just about anything else I'm doing right now. I love doing this show. Um, I always want to do more of it as soon as I'm done with it. I love talking with these guys. It's a great time. That's very, very that's very sweet, you, Nick. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want to mention anything about, you know, maybe one of us is like a major inspiration or something, you know, anything? I don't, I, I, well, I, he's dead. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> he's not going to be Henry. Jesus. Yes. Uh, okay. Peace, Wallace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wallace, he's a tombstone. Oh, okay. I think my nose is bleeding. <laughs> All right. I think oh, we'll just go to the next the next question. I'll just very briefly say working with working with these jokers is a living hell, but it's the hellfire is like a warm embrace and I really don't want to get away from it. It's fine. I wasn't asking you, who cares what you think? <laughs> <laughs> i mean you're not you're not wrong you're not wrong i just had i just thought i just thought of that joke and i had to insert it in very very forcefully and with vaseline oh no. um... sir is it your turn <laughs> actually pup oh, no i i gave i gave an answer pup you give an answer okay sure um so uh i guess um it's quite a, a privilege to be working with youtubers that i've looked up to for quite some time now um i am the youngest of the bunch and these guys kind of serve as in some ways role models for me um nick through his uh, great content and brilliant editing and sirius through you know just how fucking intelligent that guy is and wayne just for how fucking dead he is like i mean who doesn't want to be so um <laughs> You do you, I aspire to lay on a bed and just die. <laughs> so yeah, that's um that's my We answer. record this at his tombstone just to make him feel involved. <laughs> Little do you you guys don't realize, but his tombstone is actually the desk that our mics are sitting on. The tombstone behind us is fake. Okay. We'll, we'll go to the next that. So, from Barker BG, which Sonic games would you want in a potential collection? Fucking all of them. <laughs> yeah, just just drop them all in. Like we've had Mega Collection, we've had Sonic CD, the experience. I mean, Gems Collection. Um, just so... take every Sonic game and just shove them into one just one disc and just hand Except... it to a kid and just go here. You go. Steam Collection. You... Collections cost twenty dollars every like every few months of all the games outside of the obscure ones. Just throw it onto two discs. Stick um, Do it. every game except for Sonic Forces onto a disc and call it the Better Than Forces collection. <laughs> Everything in here is better than Forces. <laughs> yeah. well, it's time to talk some more about a... how Sonic Forces no. was a big <laughs> no. down and a downgrade. No. The storytelling no. in Sonic Forces is such a mess, don't you think? Oh. I genuinely want to see Chaotix back, and I want a reason to play it again. I want to see what Christian Whitehead could do if he got weird with it. I want to see the crazy stuff that you have only ever heard of in Cybershell videos. I want the weird crap. I want it now. Give it to me. Give it to me hard <laughs> in and around my eyeballs. With poor Sally. Just use that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? That's something that I would want. You, have Have you guys seen that old ass? Uh, it was it was like a proof of concept almost for a Sonic Saturday game. Talking, yeah, I've seen that. I want to play that. Not that I think it's going to be good, but I want to play it. It will definitely be no conventional Sonic game, that's for sure. Like, if you're part of the crowd that's like, oh, I like my momentum-based gameplay, that's that's not going to be the game for you. But, like, um, if you're open to, like, a stealth game, like, it looks like it could be up your street, I don't know, maybe just the world alone is enough to sell it. You know what I, I want? Nothing. You know what I actually want? Mm. This thing Sally that I, and I know... Face, I? Well, outside of that, just tickle me with the, Sally the butt first. Sally a jar and look at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, we get it. Nick's a simp, Monk. Let's continue. Oh, just, sorry, just one more. Sally Acorn's bathwater. <laughs> it's full of hair. Ugh. Ugh. 
<laughs> anyway, um, I keep thinking about that creepy Sally doll. <laughs> <laughs> you keep making those jokes. Oh God! Uh, sorry, um, Nikon, fucking pussy. Sorry, just one more. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? God damn it, pup! I was, I had a <laughs> le- genuine answer. Okay, I remember. Uh, I'm not the only one who's been uh, genuinely curious about this because I know an entire community cares. Give me what you got for Sonic Extreme. Yes. Just give it to uh, the dedicated fans. They'll spend the time. Just give them the just give them the rest of the source code. They will compile it and they'll put something out there and you can officially license it. That is failing that give me my fish eye lens sonic just just give me some gallery of that stuff like give me like uncompressed video and music and concept art and put it in um, a really comprehensive sonic collection that would be fantastic i i'd love to play some of the older games again but i've played sonic 3 and knuckles to death i don't need it again in the collection i would like it for the principle of the matter I would like to know that the best game Sega's ever made, don't at me, is Sonic Unleashed. here and available. And let's fucking bring in Sonic Unleashed. Why the hell not? S- tweak it a little bit. Like Sonic, like Mario 3D World. Make that Werehog a little bit faster. You could have a much better time with that game. Make him feel powerful. It wouldn't take that much tweaking to re-release that game. I feel but, that. But what I loved about Sonic Jam so much wasn't the games themselves while it was fun it was all the proof of concept stuff i love sonic world and i love it even more now that i knew that well it was going to be a game but it's not so here it is instead and i got to at least taste these crazy projects and this imagination and what could have been and i want to see what else what don't we know about yet show it to me that's what i want you know what I also think would be pretty awesome? If they if they basically did a Sonic compilation game, but rather than just navigating through a menu to play those games, you have this little 3D hub world of like a museum. So you mean Sonic like a, Jam? Yeah, be it like Sonic Jam with a 3D world, but you just have like these little museum exhibits. You've got a stock play style, and you can play in any character you want in that little museum. They don't have specialized skill sets. They're all just Sonic clones. But you could just have that little skin just as a bit of fun, you know, just like a little character skin. Classic Sonic, modern Sonic, boom, Sonic, have them all. And just have this compilation disc with this just this little museum setting just to make it that little bit more immersive, you know? And I love video game museums, dude. I, I love them so much. I, I, I might do a video just about video game museums. I love that crap so much. It's there my we favorite. Go. See, we're on the same page for a change. You see, that gives um, me... So that would that would give me huge. Uh, I Bees. I don't. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't. I don't know if any if if either of you have played a majority of the the Resident Evil series, but there's a thing they did in two or not in two, but in zero that they didn't do for any other game in the series. In zero, whenever you inspect pictures on the wall, it actually zooms in on the picture and lets you see it, as opposed to just describing it and letting you sit on the pre rendered background. I want that, but Sonic, where it's just all kinds of galleries that you can just zoom in on and check and look and and learn and discover. Like I want, yeah. I want that. I I want Sega to show that it cares about its history, and that's that's a, just a nice little way that developers show me that they they give a crap about this thing that they brought to life. Bioshock. Um, museum was great i remember king kong one game and at the end of the game you could walk through the museum just to appreciate all the hard work they put into the models of that game and i love that crap right little exhibit you'd get like the little alternate ending as well yep are we talking about the same kong game i love yeah that peter game. jackson's yeah i do too yes. i love that game i love, I love that, that game. game i have not actually played that game there's so many ways to play it so oh, so many ways there I'll is to, i'll have to play oh yeah it came list. out on everything Came out on everything. Um, well, um, Cirrus, I think it's your turn. Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. no. The last we just one the is collection. mine. It's Pup's turn. It is indeed. Um, so, Zero asks, 
What are your thoughts on the Sega-developed Mickey games, the Illusion series, Castle of Illusion, World of Illusion, Land of Illusion, Legend of Illusion, and the spiritual successor, Power of Illusion? I've only played World of Illusion, and I think I played like a couple of levels because I was still a tiny little stupid baby back then. Um, but yeah, it felt competent at least, you know, that's all I can remember of it is it felt competent. What about you guys? I'm about there too. Uh, I remember just playing a couple levels and finding like, well, this is fine. But this is during the time when just going slow wasn't cutting it for me anymore. Sonic felt so good compared to other platformers. Like I just didn't, I I didn't care. And I was, I was kind of over Mickey Mouse at the time. But I mean, looking back on it now, like I really like the looks of these games. I even imported the PlayStation version of one of them i forgot what it was called just because it has a couple of graphical techniques that i, I love stupid crap like that i mean that's why i got sonic 3d plus on the saturn because mm. they did a couple of cool things that the other systems couldn't do so i don't have an opinion yet but i will sooner rather than later and i'm actually looking at this list uh surprised because i didn't realize there were that many of them so i think for me I have no opinion, because I have not played any of them. The only Mickey Mouse games I've played have been the uh, the Epic Mickey stuff, but I haven't played I haven't played those original ones. Most Mickey I've played in a video game has been Kingdom Fucking Hearts, so... Yeah. Well, that's a very good game, including me. Thanks for playing it! Uh, well... Oh, Minnie! I'm coming! <laughs> oh! oh, oh. Why? I, every oh, cartoon why? character has to come here. Why? <laughs> What? <laughs> See, I was just trying to—I was just trying to use my Mickey voice for fun. You had to come in here with penises. I don't understand. Ah, so, come in here with penises. Get it? It's next disgusting. question. <sighs> next one, I, is Nick. He, he's explained this to me. He's explained it to me in voice chat. I've literally said his name on the show. I still—it still, still con confounds me. <laughs> Sasith. Is that? My, you think I'm saying that right? Sasith. And, and, yeah, I had it up on my screen, correct. and I just, I felt for you. Okay, what is it's... the most underrated? What is the most underrated Sega franchise or one-off game developed by Sega, in your opinion? Sega make other games? I swear to God. Do you guys have any opinions on this? I have, I have one, but it's not Sega made. It's just Sega published, unfortunately. But I, I, can, uh, well, I, mean, I can throw it out there still. Might as well. So there's one game on the Wii, and it is one of my favorite first-person shooters of all time. It's published by Sega, and it's called The Conduit. And it is one of the only games on the Wii that got first-person shooting right with the Wiimote and also had stable online play. And it sucked up hmm. so much of my time as a kid. And... When Sega gave the green light for for making Conduit 2, they got John St. John. <laughs> yeah, gra it just started pouring rain here, so Raz is trying to get Growlithe to come inside instead of being out in the rain. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just heard... <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that game, with, with the second game, they got John St. John, the voice of Duke Nukem, to voice the main character for the second game. When the first game barely, like the first game had a shoestring budget almost, but the second game ended up expounding like a ton on the lore of that series, and I I, I love it to death. I even did a machinima like 10 years ago with that game because that was during the, the heyday of like Red versus Blue and stuff, which is still technically going on today. Um, if you If you've not played the Conduit series, please, please do. I mean, without the online play, it's only half a game, but... It's so good for for a Wii first person shooter. It's so good. I got it. Um, Iron Man Two: The Game on Xbox 360. Now, a lot of people really don't like that game, but I actually thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed it as a kid. It was a Sega published game. You no, know, actually, the Captain America game probably deserve a sequel. I, I, have, it. I haven't played any of those. At so all? less good Arkham, but it's, the, still, um, it's still competent. Um, I miss MCU games. Bring them back. 
I, I'd like them in in a competent format, and it's crazy they haven't taken advantage of that. Um, I'm I'm really. I like I gave everyone like a laundry list of Sega games worth playing. I I miss any of them. I would take a sequel to to Rise Star. I take another sequel to Knights. I think after Balan, I'm kind of huh. kind of done with that aesthetic for a minute. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and just because I'm I'm drawing a blank, because I I I know Sega is one of those companies like. You see a game, you're like, oh, that was co- published by Sega. That's kind of cool. Um, so I know there are games I'm just completely spacing on. I'm going to go with Haunting for the Sega Genesis. Have you guys ever heard of this game? I've never heard of this. You basically play a poltergeist, and the entire point of the game is just scare the shit out of a family. That is it. The entire point is just possess items around the house, and just wait for them to come on by, scare the ever living hell of them, and scare them enough that they vacate the house. And you just follow them like a handful of houses. And you just scare them. That's the entire point of the game. And like, how does that not translate into future games? It's super cheap. Like, if you want the physical copy of the game, it's like a really early Sega Genesis game. It's insanely cheap still. And nobody talks about it. That might not be Sega Gen. Mm. That might not be a Sega property, though. That might not be Sega. I need to look this up. You did Hang it. on. Oopsie. Hang on here. And suddenly, Nick is doing a Google. <laughs> that was Electronic Arts. That was Electronic Arts. So, null and void. You null broke, and void. You broke um, it. I, I mean, I would like to see Burning Ragers come back. I thought that was... I think a lot of what Sonic Team does outside of Sonic is generally underrated because I think the re- big reason why Battle Wonder World hurt so many fans was because like when Yuji Naka stepped away from Sonic, at least while he was with Sega, um, they created some incredible stuff. Like they occasionally did Puyo Puyo, um, Fantasy Star Online. I have never played that. If I'm honest with you, I might get into that. Um, but they've they've done some incredible stuff. So. We'll just stick with the basics. Rise Star Knights. I I think they were great concepts that deserve to be explored a little bit more. So we got the next question up, uh, which is from Sinos, and that is: If you had to choose a permanent setting between the human world or Sonic's world, which would you guys want and why? I'm going to be honest. If it is Sonic's world as portrayed by the games, I'm going to want the human world. But if I'm allowed to grab a Sonic world from any part of media, then I'm okay with grabbing IDW's Sonic world. Because between the two, I feel like the the actual... I'm, I'm, I'm a huge sucker for story cohesion. I'm a huge sucker for continuity. The Sonic games that have taken place within the human universe have had the continuity that I want. The Sonic games that have taken place outside of the human universe largely ignore most of that continuity. With IDW, I feel like that's the only time that I get that kind of continuity and the more Sonic-y, more wacky world. So either give me a game version of the comics world or give me the human world. That I don't want... I don't want more Sonic Lost World type stuff. I don't want more forces... (laughs) Jesus Christ. I'm not, not going <laughs> to talk he, about it. He said it. He not going to talk about it. He said the F word. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'm going to go with the human world. Straight up. Um, I like Sonic's dynamic with humans and the dynamic between other Sonic characters and humans. I mean, let's not forget, Dr. Robotnik is a human, so it kind of makes sense to see his species as well. Um, I like characters like Professor Pickle and uh, Wentos and Chow and stuff. Cucumber I Cucumber mean, sandwiches! Yeah, the cucumber guy. You know the guy I mean. Um, I think the human world can be really good and feel much more expansive for Sonic if done right. Um, Obviously, it can be done wrong, though. Um, So, like, put it this way. If they're going to do the Sonic world right, I'll take the Sonic world. If they're going to do the human world right, I'll take the human world. Right now, I lean towards the human world because I haven't really seen the Sonic world get done right in a very long time. So that's kind of my metric. Yeah, go ahead and take it away, Nick. That's not my answer. 
You want the, the Sonic world? Can, yeah, humans can fuck off forever. I don't like humans with Sonic. I want them gone. I don't need them. Be done with them. I thought those, all that stuff was cringy. It takes me out of it. I don't like it. I don't want them. Simple as that. I know people are going to challenge me on it. Like I, I like I hate it when people try to trap me on this. Like somebody tried to do this on Twitter the other day. Like oh, so humans and Sonic aren't fine, but like Looney Tunes are fine. Like I yeah, I guess every franchise is different, and I. I like Sonic in Sonic's world. I fell in love with the world alongside Sonic. I don't see that environment anywhere else. And I wanted to know the mystery of Angel Island. And why? And I got excited in the Sonic movie when I saw checkered hills and loops. And I, I don't know, man. Like, it's weird now like with people so tired of seeing Green Hill. Like, when you go back to 2011 and you see people like really hyped up on generations coming out and like really excited about what levels could potentially be showing up and like how many people were just like genuinely irritated with how many fucking city levels there were going to be in that game. That's why, because I play video games and I, I have enough video games with cities. I don't need more cities. I don't need more humans. I want to see something more unique and you limit yourself so severely when you try to ground your reality. And when I look at Sonic, I don't, I don't see that and I don't need it and I don't want it. And I know it's going to upset some people. I don't give a shit because I have an opinion that's different from yours there. You can't um... believe it. I'm just mad. That I live in a world now where like, I don't know, man, like I, I don't feel like an adult. But I, I hate that. Like I have to defend like, <laughs> like the basic ass environments that I I loved alongside the rest of this series. I hate that I that people get genuinely mad at me because I don't think these two styles mesh super well together. So I'm getting super defensive and and haughty about it because I'm asked this all the time and people get so fucking angry at me. Hey, I know why you like Adventure One and Two. Cool. The aesthetic speaks to me more in Sonic's world. We Your uh, answer um, actually makes me want to elaborate on my own a little bit. When I say sure. uh, human world, um, generally, if we're talking about the art style of the levels and the environments, I'd still, I would like it if the next city we saw looked like a 3D version of Studiopolis or something like that. If you keep that stylized quintessential Sonic level look, I just don't mind the idea of having humans populate that world. I think that works as well. Or having the occasional detour from the the big, zany, colorful Sonic levels to maybe a more grounded level every once in a while. So basically I'm not like advocating for Sonic movie, the game. Like I think like Sonic's uh, art design and, uh, and level design from those classic games is as good as you're going to get for so it's quintessential Sonic. Mm -hmm. I just think you can have it both ways. I, I think you can have both humans and animals on that same world. Um, because Robotnik is a human, you know, <laughs> he's got to come from somewhere. Um, yeah, but I, we didn't I, need an explanation before. It was nature versus man-made madness. And that was good enough for me because, like, he's stylized enough that I don't really think about it. Like, the, he's a representation of the harm we as a species have on the planet. I mean, that's at least what the American side of things interpreted it. Um, and, and again, like, I'm not going to make a stink if the humans are there. Like, Sonic Adventure 1 is my second favorite game in the series. But... Like if if you're asked like in this hypothetical situation, um, yeah, man, I'll take him out. I don't need Sonic hanging out with the president. It's it's not my jam, man. Chris <laughs> Thorndike can fuck off. Oh, Chris Thorndike can fuck off. That we can all. <laughs> just it's when I see this human stuff, um, it it's just okay. The best I can describe it to you guys is Sonic Live, the Archie comic how creepy that was if you yeah. guys remember that it's this blatant that. that was my version of why people don't like the modern scripts um and being as cringy as they are and i think it's because people even children do not like being spoken to as children and when i look at this stuff or like these um the audience insert character like chris or like I guess Tom from the movie, which is weird. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just going for the 30-year-olds in the audience. <laughs> or um, 
the Sonic Live stuff, it feels like this blatant, like, Sonic's your buddy shit, and, like, I don't need it. Don't do that to me. I don't want... I don't... Keep them separated, please. I'm here for Sonic. I'm here for his side of things, and I'm here to see him interact with this strange, crazy world. I don't need him in mind. It, it, it It's just silly. So that's that's my opinion. I think in the case of Tom, um, just by the way, I think he's not so much there for kids. He's there for reluctant parents that don't give a fuck about Sonic. <laughs> and like, Sonic I've been, is I've been dragged on this adventure and why? Yeah, like, they're, they're, they're like, oh, fuck me. I got to watch this stupid movie about this fucking hedgehog. But they're like, oh, it's, it's got James Marsden in it. Okay, all right, we, we're good. You know, there's a human. I can relate to that. I can jerk off to that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way kids this is not a kids show this isn't Don't, a kids podcast i'm not getting any more tweets about people like i can't believe nick said the fuck word i do that because youtube makes me do that i'm sorry we we talk like this and that's you're gonna have to deal with it even so like what kid doesn't want to hear swearing come on don't don't repeat this in the discord server don't don't be a little weirdo don't copy okay, so this. We're, coming, we're coming up for the end now um so uh I have to uh, I have to read this question now. Fuck my brain stopped. <laughs> Are you um, okay? <laughs> it's we, got, we got five minutes. You can do it. Here. We can you can do okay. it, Pop. I believe in you. Okay, 27 Jump says, what series, besides Sonic, I assume, do each of you enjoy the most? I'm gonna let one of you guys answer this one first. Uh, uh Bioshock, Fallout, Psychonauts, uh Clonoa. I'm trying to think. Resident Gotta be a lot of other stuff I like. Resident Evil, Paper Resident Mario. Resident Evil, yeah, yeah, for you. Um, Warcraft, actually, uh, not not necessarily World of Warcraft as a as a game, but like Warcraft as a series with lore. I actually own a crap ton of the novels, um, and I've been really invested in the lore for that. I think that just that's just the thing for me is I just get invested in game lore like a lot. I'm so. just trying to think of like games like i will stop everything to play the next whatever this is in the series um halfway there was zelda i want to say monster hunter for me actually i just thought when you when you there define you it that way that's new monster hunter pretty much just sucks my life away i'm Animal noticing crossing. i'm moving more and more away from uh just series because i mean the game i mean the gaming world's kind of moving away from from that stuff like i i don't like most triple a games that are coming out i always pay attention to nintendo because they're still making fun colorful crap that i care about but um for the most part i really don't pay that much attention i'm looking backwards a lot i'm just getting to that age and also looking a lot more indie stuff i'm finding a lot more of what i like in video games in that weird crazy space nowadays than than ever before um so it's not it's there not is a stuff series, but i'll have to say undertale now so um i've been playing quite a bit of borderlands 2 with a buddy of mine recently i'm enjoying that a lot um obviously there's the insomniac spider-man games the batman arkham series it's tough um so arkham's good they, they're pretty obvious for me i guess being the marvel dc guy um uh what else uh, i like the lego games i enjoy those a lot um the original spyro trilogy um i'm playing ty the tasmanian tiger on the nintendo switch uh ukulele at least the first one before they decide to switch to 2d like the whole point was it was a return to the 3d platformer why would you make I, it 2d for the second it's one it's the better game dude i actually no, really did out. i really did not like oh. ukulele ukulele just rubbed me very the wrong way i tried I, yeah i'm torn I mean, banjo would be a I'm game series it. i stop everything for but here's but the man. thing, Banjo, so I, I, I went back and I replayed Banjo-Tooie on stream last year, and I found that every problem I have with the ukulele exists in Banjo-Tooie, all of them. It does, it does. I thought they got progressively worse um, with their exploration games, Donkey Kong 64 being uh, the more egregious of them, yeah. so I, I, I do I, think that that was a very Sonic-related issue there where more things expanded the less of a handle they really had on what they had um, another game um 
another game I've been playing recently, and it's one where I, I feel so sorry for the fans, but uh, Rayman Legends. I feel so sorry for Rayman fans. They get nothing. They get nothing ever. Um, they but, they should appreciate having Rayman Legends at all, dude. Like we that I mean, game before is that. Well, we thought that it was just. I mean, before Origins, I guess we thought Rayman was, was gone dead, for a while, rabid. and before that, we thought he was going to be nothing but rabid spinoffs. Yeah, so, I understand that, but it's like you have a smash hit with like Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends, and then you don't follow it up. Like, well, there's. I think Michael and Cell's like done, isn't he? I think he's just done completely with the world of video games. I think, or maybe just have left to Ubisoft. Just have someone take over, make more. I guess, but I mean, I don't know if you're going to find that that same kind of something there. I mean, like we're making another Bioshock game, but get the fans in. You know, as much as I love Bioshock too. Oh, I love Bioshock, but I mean, like without that Ken Levine story, I don't know how well it's going to do. I still believe in it because I'm more there for the environment than anything else. So, like, I love Bioshock too, even though a lot of people will just scoff at it because it doesn't have some big meta narrative that does just whatever. Like, whoa, it's commentary on playing video games. I gotta say, it's more. It it was never the commentary on playing video games that made me excited about that. But then again, I'm the philosophy guy. For me, it was the critique on Ayn Rand. I couldn't give a fuck about either one of them. It's a big fucking Art Deco city under the ocean. I want to jam around in that. I'm playing the first one on Switch, and I'm very impressed with it so far. Um, yeah, good game so far. Um, yeah, I've really been doing more Switch gaming than anything else recently. Um, as I say, Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, Portal Knights, stuff like that is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I think yeah. at this point, I, I'd more follow dev teams than I do franchises, but that's not entirely true. Because like I said, Bioshock made by anybody, I'm going to pay attention to it. Mm. Same with Fallout. Like it's it, Even when 76 doing stupid shit, I'm there for that map. Because I like to explore stuff. That's what I do with 3D games. If they ever made another Endless Ocean, be on top of that call off no i'm sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna swim around and poke turtles is what i'm gonna do it, it, no nobody okay i don't get it <laughs> endless I, ocean you, you literally just explore the ocean that is it and it's so much fun i'm just i'm still processing the whole ukulele thing <laughs> I, I'm, I'm enjoying that game so far but like i i get that you guys are saying the second one's better have you but it's like the have, have you the expanded? entire point the entire point of that game is it's a return to the 3d platformer it's i'm just still my i'm question, trying to process my, my question it, it's trying more. to be but it's not well done um that doesn't mean give up that doesn't mean go 2d like everyone else I that's, miss 3D that's not doesn't mean it's going 2D though. It just means like we're still expanding this franchise and we're getting something else out there. I'm amazed we got a, anything at all from that franchise, and it's giving it more legs. That's gonna give it another chance for something else. It, that's a game that really needed a little bit more refining before they got it out the door. Instead, and that's unfortunately a lot of the case. patches since. Like I've had no problems. It's with it's it so it's far. not it's not the mechanics the of the game layout. that's the problem. Yeah. It's the way the game is made. I understand that when the game came out. There were issues people had with the the way the camera would work, the way it would get locked behind things, the way it would kill you, and that's been patched out, and I've played it since patch. My problem is not camera work. My problem is not mechanical. My problem is that 3D platformer games of yesteryear worked so well because they were populated with stuff to do, and ukulele, especially whenever you do a world expansion, every single time you expand one of those worlds, it becomes this vast array of of nothing and okay if, if i'm yet to experience that for myself but that sounds understandable like i remember I, I i feel like 3d platformers are difficult to get right because i remember when i first got my ps4 one of the big launch titles was knack and it was supposed to be a big return to the to the mascot platformer and that game was a pile of wank that was just this empty unpopulated barely any platforming involved just monotonous combat and it's like Fuck me. Now now we've got now we've got Ball and Wonderworld. I just want to get a quick word in about that. Like I wasn't exactly following its development, but I've seen the reviews and stuff and I've seen footage of it and it just makes me sad, man. I get so much sense that Yuji Naka and the the other guy were trying to make this game for everybody that would be the celebrated thing and there's a little ticket in the box and it's like 
it, it, it's really apparent that a lot of love went into it, and like on paper, there's a lot in there that sounds up my street. But oh man, that's unfortunate. That's just the literal problem with it is everything is still on paper. Um, yeah, it just makes most sad, everything man. is going to be in the story that was released in this weird script like novel i'm partially oh, through it right now and um i like i told you guys um i'm probably gonna have to rework some of my script because austin eruption did this fantastic video that basically talks about a lot of the stuff i wanted to talk about which is like basically talking about why so many people were rooting for this game even though it feels like a lot of people are just having the best time of their lives just ripping this thing apart um yeah, man. I mean, ambition does not equal a quality experience, and unless it's Sonic. Boy, anyway, anyway. With that said, everyone, we are coming up on an hour and a half. We have been here enjoying each other's company for a time, including the bees. <laughs> Nick, I can't. I can't so. tell if you're legitimately frustrated or if that's just the resting Nick face. No, I'm. It's just <laughs> been a long day, man. I've been up for a very, very long time. Um, I'm just tired. I mean, we do have a handful of questions left. I don't know if we want to try and power through them or if we wanted to send Pup off to bed because it's getting close to that time. So it's 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 a combination of of Pup needing to go to bed and and I'm I'm not having the time as well. Like oh, I'm fair enough. <laughs> it's it's fair two enough. it's two people. <laughs> Okay, well, let's, uh, yeah, I mean, we're at a good stopping point here, and wow, we still have so many other videos to get through. So let's, um, yeah, let's just kind of call it for the night. You guys are up and about. Maybe we do a part two, and we release a video early, or we hang on to it until a rainy day or nothing to talk about next week. But we got a lot of stuff to go through, and it turns out the questions gives us a lot to talk about. So keep them coming, guys, because they're a lot of fun. What we didn't do this time will be leftovers for next time. I think so. I, think oh, yeah. so. I agree. Yeah, doing it. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, until the next time, my busy bees. It's uh, been fun. <laughs> I will. I will actually end you. I will actually. Buzz, buzz. End you. Like, why is he so violent? <laughs> I just. Does honey just become? <laughs>